Hi guys, Samantha from Jessima Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you how to create a honeycomb cane. So I've got a Skinner blend here ready to go. So essentially we have three triangles here. We have a triangle of raw sienna, um, acru and cadmium yellow. So this I'm just going to turn upside down. Then these you want to take the long side and rotate it so it sits like so. Repeat with this one. Trim off these edges. Like so. And I don't want so much hang off. I cut off maybe about half of that. Okay, put that back in with your colours and then create a skinner blend. And all you do to do a skinner blend is we'll just pick this up and actually I like to roll it first. Let's so just roll it like so. And then in the direction that I am rolling, you will put it through the pasta machine. So, you do not put it through a pasta machine from this end to this end. You put it from this end to this end. All three colours touching the rollers at once. Like so. Now I'm just going to take it down to a thinner setting. The reason for that is I just find it's a little bit easier to work with. Then you fold it so that you have one pure colour on each side and so you can roll all three colours touching the rollers again like so and just repeat this process until you have the colours blending together I'll do one more roll and you should be able to see here that we're starting to get a thin line of it starting to blend it can take around 10 to 15 to get a good blend so just continue folding and rolling. There we go, got a nice smooth blend. So the next step is going to be to take this, fold it in half like you've been doing before. We're going to fold it in half again. Just press down these edges so that it sits in a nice rectangular block. Now usually you can roll it from this end to this end with all three colours touching the rollers. This time we're going to be rolling it the opposite way and we're going to actually be lengthening our Skinner Blend. Because we're going to be making a Skinner Blend bullseye. So roll it from this end to this end. And I'm going to start on my thicker setting and roll. So you can see, I've started stretching. Now I'm going to take it down to about half a millimetre thick and I'm going to roll it again. Okay, and starting from this end see how it slowly transitions out. Now we're always going to start rolling from the yellow side because we want the yellow to be in the middle. So just pinch the end there. I'm just trying to position myself so you can see this. And just start rolling like so. Very easy. And just roll up the entire length of your Skinner Blend until you reach the other end and that will be your Skinner Blend Bullseye cane. And there we go. Then just press in that end. Just press either end to get it to sit nice and flat, like so. Okay. Then start squishing in the middle of your cane, and we want to reduce this out so that we can cut uh, quite a few pieces out of the sides. Say over twenty. So start reducing. You can see we're going to have a bit of waste on either end. There we are. And I'll just begin rolling and reducing. Okay, so I've reduced it down quite a bit as you can see here. You just want to continue reducing it down and try to make sure that the uh, cane is as even along its length as you can. So right now I'm just busy going along length and evening it out. Then cut off the excess over here and I'll just quickly roll that. There we are. And I'll do the same on the end. Cut that excess and just roll because these ends are always, the ends are always a bit thicker. Okay. Then I'm going to cut uh, maybe about a three, about two centimeter length. And then you're just going to cut 
same length until you run out of cane. Okay, now we have a bunch of canes. So I forgot to mention before that um, for, for each of the colors, the number, the amount of clay that I use for each color was about, um, about one fourth of a block of Prima per color. Okay, so now I want to build this in a hexagon shape. Because we want it to mold these pieces into a hexagon shape and we want to reduce it in a hexagon shape. So just build it as close to a hexagon as you can manage. And just continue until you can't continue building it in a hexagon shape. And I might even gently press it into that shape. Because it can be a little hard to keep track of. But anyway, I'll just continue until it's finished. And there we go, we actually ended up with exactly the right amount that we needed. So now, just going to press it into the shape of a hexagon. And you can use your roller to help out with that. Just roll on each side. As you start to form the correct shape for your cane. And this will also begin to reduce it. And then once, once this has been formed into the correct shape and we have nice sharp edges and um, it just in general looks nice and sharp, then I'll cut it and show you what it looks like. Okay, and here it is now that I've cut it open. Now this is a very small version of the cane. Essentially what you would want to do if you're going to plan on using it so you want to then take this, try to cut slices from it, so just give me a moment to do that. Okay. Lay one down, so let me move these out of the way, put this in the centre so you can see grab a blade and use it to just gently square up those sides because they will get distorted after having been sliced a bit. Then you take another one and just quickly square up those sides as well. And this is easier once the cane's rested. Right now it's actually quite soft. Take that and pair it up like so and then you can see we have a nice digit there and a digit there to fit another one in once we have quickly, there we go, then just quickly press down on those sides to get it to fit and there you can see you can very quickly build up a nice looking veneer that looks like honeycomb but just gently pressing all these pieces together and of course you would want to let the cane rest so that it uh, sits nicer together but you can see that you could very quickly create a honeycomb sheet so I'm just going to continue doing this a little bit more and then when it's done I'll show you what it looks like okay and here is something of what you could create you could continue building out as you want it but I'll keep it at that size then just grab a piece of plain printing paper and gently burnish it flat and then you have a piece of honeycomb a honeycomb veneer that you can very easily turn into a project this would be a great way to create some coasters all you would need to do is gently sharpen up these edges and I'll show you how to do that or you could actually just bring over a hexagon cutter and you could very easily create a coaster so 
I'm just busy burnishing now to get rid of any uneven spots. Again, letting that cane rest for about, oh, I'd say about at least 15 minutes will definitely help with this. Okay, there we are. And that looks pretty good as far as not having any seams, guys. Then if you wanted to keep the original shape, you'd need to go with your blade and gently press up against these edges to sharpen them back up again because that burnishing will uh, distort it a bit. So you can very, very easily reshape those edges by just pressing your blade up against it. Or if you have a hexagon cutter like I do, I'll show you that in a second, you can easily just cut out the shape you want. So here's a hexagon cutter. Let's find the best spot to cut it. Press down. Yeah. Okay. Now I have some little bee transfers here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place this back into place and I'm going to take another smaller hexagon and I'm going to put it in the middle. Like so. Press. I will remove this. And now we have a little donut to work with. Okay. Yeah. And now I would put this into the oven for, or I'd say about half an hour, uh, just to set it. And in the meantime, I'll show you what we want to do with this. But set this first. Okay. And here it is out of the oven. So now I'm just going to put this aside because it is quite hot at the moment. It's not quite as strong as it could be, so just be careful with it. You don't want to be overdoing it. And now we want to take a piece of white. I'm just going to put that here. And you're going to choose which bee you want to use. And I want to use this one over here because it fits nicely inside here. And you can see that one also fits quite nicely, so just decide which one you think will work best. Okay, so I've decided on this one here. So now, just take this. And cut. And this has a protective film on it. Don't take that off. Keep it on. I'm just going to cut around that quickly and just remove the excess bits that I do not need. Okay. Now you can remove the excess film. Now this is sticky. The uh, transfer anyway. So just be careful with it. And now I'm choosing which side I want here. Do you want this side here? And actually I want to burnish this so that it's nice and smooth. So let me grab this and I don't want to burnish it onto a tile because I then might distort it when I pick it up. So just burnish it between two pieces of paper just to smooth off any issues. I've laid the transfer over to the side. Okay. Then I'm just going to take a little bit of alcohol. This is not completely necessary. But I'm just going to spray a little bit of alcohol onto the surface because I just want to clean it because it is white and you can see there's a bit of debris on the surface and by spraying the alcohol on it allows me to wipe that off and just in general make it cleaner. Blow that dry and then we'll apply a transfer. Okay, now we're going to grab the transfer and we're just going to lay it upside down onto our piece, burnish it on well 
and then take water and give it a good spritz. Like so. And then I'm just going to put that off to the side because that's going to take a little while. And we're going to prepare our backing. And so we have all these cane bits and pieces and I think that will make a nice backing. So just take each piece and just chop that up finely. So you don't want huge chunks. that all together well. Scoop it up, press together and then we're just going to create a marble from it. So I'm just rolling that into a ball quickly then roll into a long sausage and begin twisting And this will begin the process of creating a nice kind of uh, marbly effect. And I don't want to twist too much, that's probably enough actually. I'm just going to quickly twist these ends up, like so. Give it a quick roll to smooth those out. Just press it together a bit more. And then begin to flatten that out. I'll begin with my fingers and then I'll use my roller because it's easier that way. Then I'll just gently push that up on itself so that it's a little bit shorter because it's a little long for me after rolling out. There we are. Then run that through on your pasta machine on your thicker setting, lengthening the straps, not widening them. And I'm going to bring it down to about a millimetre thick. And there we go, that's our backing ready to go. This is just about ready to use. So this should slide right off when ready. Like so. And now just keep in mind that these transfers that I have are transparent. And so if whatever backing you put them on, you will be able to see it through the transfer. Okay. I'm just dabbing that to just dry up a bit. Okay. Now I'm going to take a piece of paper and this will soak up any remaining liquid and I'm also just going to give it a quick burnish like so and the transfer might come up a little bit I'll just gently press that back down If you're worried about it coming up, don't burnish it while it's still a little wet. Uh, give it a little bit of time before doing that. But anyway, there we go. Now I just want to lift that up off of this. And we're going to cut out our piece. So I've positioned it. Then you want to just cut straight down. And the cutters that I supply are sharp enough to cut straight through that transfer. You can see here there's a little bit of transfer on there. You can gently scrape that off later. But uh, just make sure that your cutters are strong enough to cut through, or well not strong enough, sharp enough to cut straight through a transfer. Because sometimes they're not sharp enough. Okay, now I'm just going to clean up these little bits along the edge. Sometimes there's a little bit of clay left over. Okay, I'm going to bring this over. And we're going to position it into the right spot. And this should fit very snugly in there. Like so. Okay, just press along those edges. And we're going to be putting resin in this, so it doesn't matter if you have a few little gaps, that's fine. I'm just going to 
just going to pick that up. And that is why we had our backing ready to go. And just pop that onto a piece of paper that you could be happy to bake on. going to burnish that down onto the piece of paper so that our backing is nice and smooth and we don't have to do sanding because who likes doing sanding if they don't have to. We're going to grab this and place it on at a wonky angle okay, and this should be okay to be burnished now. Gently going to press that down. And now I don't want to use a cutter because sometimes, especially since this clay is baked, it can not fit exactly and then the clay can get a little stuck in the cutter. So don't use your cutter at this point to cut out your backing. Uh, since this is a geometric shape, it's much easier to just do it with your blades. And it comes out cleaner anyway. And then just go around again and make sure you've got all those little bits. Okay. There we go. And just smooth your blade along the sides if needed. Okay. And the last step that I want to do is just going to be to gently burnish this to see if I can just get it to sit in there a little bit more snugly and just remove any areas where it might be um might have a gap like over here so just gently press that and burnish it and you're not gonna be able to get rid of all of the gaps but you can get rid of most of it okay now we're ready to put that into the oven for a full hour at pretty much recommended temperature and then when we are done we can um do the sides because they need to be done then we'll bake it put some resin on it put a bale in and we'll have a nice finished pendant so you can see how it looks there it goes from a cane here to this looks very nice okay so this is out of the oven and ready to use so now take a piece of raw sienna and warm it up thoroughly in your hands because you want this to be nice and warm so that we can smear it along the sides to cover up any issues. So warm that up and roll it into a log. There we are. And you can see that we just need to smear it along these sides. Like so. You can use liquid clay in place of this clay if you have the right sort of matching cutler. Um, but essentially we're just using it as grouting to fill in these areas where we have slight little holes. And then when you've done this, I'll show you how to quickly smooth it all so that it's nice and clean looking. And then you want to put that in the oven for about half an hour at pretty much recommended temperature just to uh, cure that. And then when that's done, we can give it a quick sand if necessary. I'm not even sure if we need to do that. We might need to just do it around the edges a little bit because of um, debris that sometimes gets on there. Then we can pop some resin on. And... And string very simple just got one more to go here so I might as well just show you that okay there we are now I just want to take a little teeny tiny pinch of that and just pop it on the corner there where we're missing a bit of clay okay. then smooth that over bend it over onto the other side and smooth that over like so there we go just repeat on either side, just smooth off any areas where you have uh, fingerprints or just in general some pieces that have not been s uh, it's, it's just make it look like it's one continuous strip of clay, you don't want any joints so there we are, and then when you've done doing that smooth off all of the edges and stuff, pop in the oven for half an hour at least and then we can move on to the next step. Okay, so once it's baked, here is how it should look. 
nice and clean along those edges. And here's the back. Looking all good. So now we're just going to do a very quick sand with some 400 and 600 grit sandpaper just along these edges just to get rid of any um, dirt that might be there and it will just clear up the pattern a bit. You don't need to do heavy sanding, it's just some light sanding to remove any imperfections before we put the resin on top. And just be careful not to sand your transfer because you can sand it off. And I don't think I even need to use 600, I think that's fine. That will just have gotten rid of any debris that I needed off there. Alright, so now I've got a resin mat here. I'm just going to pop that on top. And I'm going to be using some of Lisa Babelka's Magic Gloss UV Resin. Just start in the middle, and sorry, I know you can't see that right at this moment. Yeah, just a bit to start off with. Then you're just going to gently spread that over to the side so that we have a nice glossy finish. If you want, you can sand it and not use resin, that's perfectly up to you. But I like the resin because it then gives it a nice glass like shine and it just looks really pretty. Keep in mind that uh, you can also, instead of making the cane, if you are not a cane person and don't really like using canes or making canes or just are a little bit scared of using them, um, you can also use a mica shift in replacement for the um, Excuse me, I'm having a loss of words here. You can use a mica shifting replacement of the uh, cane that we've used here. Just use a honeycomb texture and some gold mica powder, or not mica powder, uh, metallic clay, and you should have something that can replace this quite easily. Now, just making sure that there are no bubbles, because I don't want those. Want it all the way to the edge. Just looking at it from the side, making sure that I'm happy with that. There's a little bubble there that I just want to scoop out, and one over there. Looking at it from the side really can help pick up imperfections because you have the light shining directly on it, and that can really help out. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that, how that looks. Now I'm going to put that into the um, UV light for about half an hour just to make sure that it is cured completely, and then we can drill it and string it. And so here it is out of the UV light and you can see how beautiful that looks and this is the way that I am going to hang it. Now I do have a little drip over here, I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up but I have a little drip here. So just slip that with your blade and then I'm going to try to flick that off. Be careful, okay? There. And that's how you just get rid of a little resin drip. Okay, so now we're going to drill it. So I'm using a push drill and I'm just going to insert it at the spot where I'm going to insert my bale. Twist a bit to get a hole started and then push it. And just be careful because if the resin's really hard it can slip out like that. the resin is the hardest but there you go then go through a few times just to make sure it's nice and clean okay then I am going to be using some copper so I'm going to be working with one j copper jump ring just bring over a bale I'm going to see if I can fit this bale on the cord and I'm going to be using a ready made rubber cord necklace so before we do anything, I just want to check if this bale will work, and it will, so I'm just going to pop that onto my cord, and we can use that in a moment. 
And I'll just open that up. Hook that through. There okay. Then I'm just going to close that up. Spin it back around into the hole there. And now I just need a small jump ring to link those two. And I've got a very small one here. Open that up. Slip that on. And we'll see if that works. This one you can see here, the uh, bail is a little bit on the um, rusty side. So I might just try and get rid of some of that waste in there. Okay, so I got rid of that junk, uh, but I did end up needing to use a little bit of a larger jump ring. So I'll just take that and close it. There we go. And there we go. There's our pendant. And our rubber cord will just seal up. Like so. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Very simple. Of course, you could just do the cane. I didn't actually mean to do a project in this video, but an idea sprung to mind, and so I just went with it. So you can see how a simple cane like that can be turned into something very elegant that actually is really quite easy to create. So, if you enjoyed this tutorial, do let me know in the comments below. And if you would like to support this channel so I can continue posting videos like this one, please do consider becoming a patron and supporting me on Patreon. You don't um, have to sign up on the highest level, but I do encourage you to because then you can uh, actually access a whole bunch of rewards. I have over 200 exclusive tutorials for patrons. Uh, I also have really good discounts, such as 20% off for my entire Etsy shop, so you can check that out. Uh, but any level is very helpful, and I would be very grateful if you could look into that. And if you did have any questions, please do consider asking them in the comments below, and I'll try to get to them as quickly as possible. And as always, I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.